then he begs them for mercy. Please let me live. Let my, my people in there live. You know, we'll, we'll give back all the stuff that we took. And so the Navajo are like, well, all right, you're going to give the stuff back. You know, you, you seem to be, um, contrite about the whole thing. So we'll, we'll let you go. By the way, what happened to those three girls that you took from the first village? And, um, there are some questions that really don't need an answer. And so the Navajo took this guy and threw him back inside the cave and piled the fire higher. I know we have young listeners out there, so I don't want to like detail what the Apache male warriors were using these young girls for. So they pile more fuel back on the fire and just keep the burning going. So it, it burns for about two days before the flames all die down and the uh, screaming from the cave stops. The Navajo warriors go into the cave and they find that the Apaches had taken all of the horse carcasses and built a wall between them and the fire. So there were all these charred horse carcasses, and then behind the wall of horses, there were all of the, the dead Apache warriors. There were 42 of them there, and they had just suffocated from all the smoke. So after that, neither the Apaches nor the Navajos would use or enter the cave. The prevailing idea going on was that because it was such a terrible death that the Apaches died, that the cave had you know, been cursed. And that death had not only cursed the cave, but the surrounding land. So we're going to fast forward now about 30 years. And so now uh, Earl and Louise Cundiff buy the property and they build a trading post there because more and more people are going through. So it's right at the intersection of those important roads. And they build a gas station, restaurant, a motel. There's some little uh, rental cottages that people can stay in. And they lease the land out to this guy, Henry Two-Gun Miller. He was a con man. He claimed he was an Apache thief called Crazy Thunder. I think that's a, a great name for anybody. I might start calling my cat Crazy Thunder. And so uh Henry Miller brings in a Hopi Indian, and he has him building some structures to look like prehistoric villages. And he calls this whole area Fort Two Guns. This guy thought it was a really great idea to take the bones of the dead Apaches who are in the cave down below and use them in part of his roadside attraction. He had them like out on display so that people coming by would see them and think that this was a good place to stop. Oops. Yeah, I think generally going in that cave, forget about taking the bones, probably not the best idea. Mm. So in 1926, Tugun murders Earl Cundiff over a dispute with the lease. He is tried for the murder, but he was never actually convicted of it. He just kind of continued on. In 1930, he gets run out of town by an angry mob because things are just really going kind of nuts at that point. The residents are complaining of a lot of ghostly activity in the city, and they think that it is because he had desecrated the cave and he had taken the bones. He was selling them to people, visitors that came through. I mean, the human body's got, what, 208 bones times 42 people? It's like 8,000 bones. Oh, that can't be right. Yeah, that should be right. Yeah, it's like 8,000 bones. And so people, you know, complained a lot that they would be walking around, they would hear these moans that would just come from nowhere. There would be footsteps and little footprints that people would see all over the place that weren't caused by anybody going by. There was just a general sense of unease all around the camp. And they had a real problem with fires. Buildings were often and mysteriously just burning down. And two of the bigger fires that happened was in 1934, after Two Gun had been run out of town, Louise Cundiff and her new husband came back and they tried to rebuild the town um, and get it up on its feet again. And their large trading post that they had built in 1934 burned down again. So time goes on, different people buy in, it goes through a number of different hands. People are trying to rebuild the town. And then in 1971, the entire town caught fire and burned down. And so the only things left standing were uh, the stone structures that the Hopi had built to look like prehistoric areas. The town changed hands a few more times. There were a few more sad stories about people who bought it, who had the idea that they were going to renovate it, they were going to get it going again. And then they died of different kind of causes, killed themselves or um, just sudden sort of mysterious deaths. So nothing's really been done there since the town burned down in 1971. Uh, locals who are in the general area 
warn visitors to stay away from the cave, and they say that anybody who goes out there to the cave is usually scared away before they even go in because they hear the moans of angry spirits coming from the cave. To go just a little bit into your cryptozoology that you love so much, there is supposedly an Aswang, A-S-W-A-N-G, that lives in the cave. Have you ever heard of an Aswang? Aswang? I'm not sure how you say it. No. So it's a shape-shifting, vampire-like creature. Half man, half dog. Kind of sounds like a rattlesnake. It has razor-sharp claws, and it sucks unborn fetuses from their mother's womb. I have heard of this, but I don't remember it being called that. I'm probably saying it wrong. But yes, I have heard of it. Okay. Yeah, that just sounds like a horrible, horrible thing. If you are so interested, you can travel out and visit the Apache Death Cave, or if you have $3.7 million, you can buy it. No, thank you. Russell Crowe currently owns it. God bless him. And it's on sale. Russell Crowe would own that. So I actually found the listing, and if you bear with me for just one second, I will read you the listing, because it's kind of funny. So this is Zero East Two Guns Exit. In Winslow, Arizona. I was standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona. I had to. That, that's okay, because apparently that must have been exactly where they were for that song. That's funny. So my dad's friends, Mike and Kathy, they went to Winslow, Arizona, and there's like a statue for the song. It was like some guy on a corner. Did they go to the Apache Death Cave? They did not. Are you sure? Yeah, Kathy would have told me. Okay. Maybe they were so frightened of it, they blocked it out. Anyway, so here's the listing. Own a large piece of Arizona history. Rare development opportunity abounds just east of the now fully operational state-of-the-art Twin Arrows Resort and Casino. Be on the cusp of this growing sector of the state and re-inhabit this lost town rich in history and lore. Property encompasses over 230 acres of level and development-ready land, as well as majestic and sinuous canyonscape. Vestiges of a gas station and other antiquated outbuildings remain, but the setting is ideal for myriad uses from commercial to residential, zone general. Be the new owner to breathe life back into this once wild and colorful town. Phase 1 environmental report previously conducted with gas tanks now closed, and three-phase power available from nearby substations. $3.7 $3.7 million, and you could be the proud owner proud owner of the Apache Death Cave. I don't love how they said it was development ready. It is development ready. It's nice and flat. You don't have to clear the land. No, I, I understand that part of it, Beth. What I'm saying is I feel like in two years we're going to be like revisiting this. Like They put up a billion condos, and now that's haunted. I know. It's... It it would actually be quite comical. If someone were to buy this, put up condos, I would want to go there and talk to all the people that lived in those condos. Yeah, hopefully they don't do that. Be like, what freaky stuff happened? Yeah, hopefully they just let this cave hang. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway, I had a lot of fun with that one. Okay, so my next haunted Native American burial site is the Lake Shawnee Amusement Park, which... That name sounds a little bit familiar. It is because last week, Brennan Shea told us he's doing an investigation down there next week. On October 19th. Is it October 19th or is it the October 27th event he's doing? Uh, It was October 19th and I specifically remember because my anniversary is the 20th. That's why I couldn't go on the 19th. Yeah. So to our West Virginia listeners, you have three days to contact Brendan Shea of Serial Spirits and get in on his ghost hunt of the Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Okay, here we go. I can remember the story. I won't interrupt. Thank you. Okay, so our story begins in 19... No, no, it doesn't. Our story begins in 1775 when the first settler came down to West Virginia. His name was Mitchell Clay. He brought him and his family down, and they decided to build a house and settle right by Lake Shawnee. Now, as tends to kind of happen with American settlers going in, they decide it's their land. Well, there's a problem with that, and that is that the Shawnee people have been living on that land for hundreds of years, and they didn't really ask for a new neighbor. So other settlers follow Clay and his family. They start to come down. And in 1783, Mitchell and some other people decide to go out hunting. Very common for the time. 
and some of his kids are there with him, but everyone's kind of spread out. You know, you don't hunt. I mean, I've never been hunting, but I assume you don't do it in like a big group. You know, everyone kind of goes out and does their own thing. Unfortunately, some of the shiny people were around there and didn't want them hunting on the land. So one of Mitchell's sons, Bartley, got scalped. His daughter, Tabitha, was stabbed and killed. And his oldest son, oh my gosh, I don't have my notes. I, I can't remember. It's either his oldest son or his youngest son. Anyway, his son, Ezekiel, was captured and they took him to Ohio. Now, I believe this part of West Virginia is very close to what is now Ohio, but I'm going to kind of circle back later as to why they were going to Ohio. So Mitchell Clay and some of the other settlers, they all went and tried to track their son, obviously. And unfortunately, they were a little too late in finding him because he was burned at the stake. Which is really sad. Naturally, uh, some revenge took place and the settlers tried to just kill as many of the Shawnee who were involved with this child getting burned at the stake as they could. And it is said that that is when the Shawnee cursed the land of Shawnee Lake. So that happened and it was awful and terrible. And then roll over to 1920. This guy, Snidow, comes in and buys the land. He says, great, that's great land. I'm going to build an amusement park. And that's exactly what he does. So his amusement park has a wooden chair ride on it. You know, those, you know, when you have all the chairs and they're all on the chains and you spin them all around. Fun. My favorite ride. They have a giant Ferris wheel. And then they created a cement pool. And you could go to the, what's it called? Uh, like bathhouse? Yeah. So what, whatever that's called, bathhouse. And purchase a wool bathing suit for 15 cents and go swimming in their cement pond. So that's kind of interesting. I wouldn't want to go swimming in wool, but so that was going on for a while and everyone was really happy. It became really popular. There was a dance hall on the property of the amusement park. There was a speakeasy in the amusement park because it was a time of prohibition. But unfortunately, there were some other incidents that went on there. So the first was a young boy died in the lake, which wasn't meant for swimming. People at the amusement park were not supposed to be swimming there, but this boy, I presume, wandered off and drowned in the lake, which is tragic. Another young boy drowned in the swimming pool, the cement swimming pool. And then what closed down the park was the death of a young girl. So she was on the swings, the rotating swings. And so she was on the rotating swings and all of a sudden a truck making deliveries at the amusement park was backing up and backed into the ride and killed the girl. And it was this huge, huge story. And it, it ended up closing the park down. Now, I thought that was kind of interesting because I'm like, oh, two boys and a girl, just like the children of Mitchell Clay who passed away. Two boys and a girl. But as I continued to research, there were also three other deaths responsible at the park, but no one's been able to, there is no account of who they are. I mean, this was a long time ago in the early 1920s, so... In West Virginia, so I, I don't know. I couldn't find any information, but everyone says there were six deaths that happened at that park. So it got closed down. All the equipment was sold. All the rides were sold. Everything was gone. Then in the 1980s, this guy Gaylord White purchased the land. Now, Gaylord had worked at the park in his youth and loved it and thought it was just great. So he wanted to recreate the park in all of its glory including he wanted to do another chair spin ride. He wanted a Ferris wheel back. And then he wanted to add like little kitty rides, like sm rides for small children. And in the pond, he put bumper boats. So those were his big things. He built a giant stage. Now, every good ghost story has a bit of coincidence in it, right? So as they're going and they're trying to find all this equipment for their park, they find a spinning chair ride for sale in New Jersey. So they drive up to New Jersey, they pick it up, they bring it back down. They run the serial number. It's the exact same one that the little girl had died on at the park before. And that was very interesting. And they thought it was wild and <laughs> what a strange coincidence. And they kept it. And apparently this park was very, very popular. So they said, I believe, and again, I don't have my notes, I'm so sorry, but I believe in 1987, they had a $1 mission day or one dollar mission weekend for for the July that year, and they said over ten thousand people came through. 
And they had bands playing 24 hours on a stage. It was like this great party. 